In the previous video, we learned about the more complex one range and two range archer openings. In this one, we'll look at the simpler scouts opening as well as expand our castle age knights opening to include a siege push. When I say simpler, I mean that the base management is simpler. For scouts, you just have to add a stable and then make some scouts, using the same feudal economy management of adding farms every 60 wood. This should be quite familiar to you at this point, so you should be able to focus a bit more on the unit control, which is necessary to maximize the value you get from your scouts. Scouts are actually fairly weak for their cost, but their main advantage is that they are the fastest unit in Feudal Age. This lets them run from bad fights and group up to pick off units that are exposed. The dynamics of scouts versus archers changes based on the timing in Feudal Age. Early, since food is plentiful and you don't need to make a mining camp, scouts have the advantage over archers. You also start with a scout, so by default you'll have a numbers advantage by going scouts. Archers also require fletching to be useful, which also takes time. The difference in training time is also a factor, though not too significant. You can easily have four scouts running around your opponent's base before they're ready to move out with their archers. This timing advantage doesn't last long though, so moving out with your scouts as soon as possible will help you do the most damage. Once the opponent has three or four archers with fletching and a couple of spearmen, the army strength goes to the archers player. Part of the reason that you can't keep up with scouts production for long is due to running out of sheep and hunt. Since you can only farm with one villager per farm, your food income is severely limited in the early game. So during this time after you're forced to stop scout production, if your opponent sends their 4-8 to eight archers with two spearmen forward, you won't be able to directly fight them with your scouts. Relying on walls to delay, getting skirmishers can be the play. We'll get more into that when we go through the build though. If your walls are secure, then going to Castle Age for Knights can be the best way to deal with the archers, but sometimes the map is super open and you just can't safely get to Castle Age without a larger military investment. In this case, making skirmishers and scouts can beat archers and spearmen. The idea is that the skirmishers kill the spearmen, and then the scouts can use their mobility to get on top of the archers while the skirmishers do some damage from the back. Really, the important micro here is to pick off the spearmen before losing too much health on your scouts. With bloodlines and possibly armor, scouts become quite strong against archers in late feudal age. So basically, scouts are strong in early feudal, archers come ahead in mid feudal, and then scouts can become strong again in late feudal, especially if upgraded and supported by skirmishers. Since you're not relying on raw power, but instead mobility, scouts can be quite difficult to make work. But with practice, you can control the game by initiating fights that are only possible due to that mobility. For scouts opening, let's build off of our defensive 20 villager uptime dark age with walls before feudal age. You really need to wall out any early militia or men at arms, and you'd like to not get surprised by any mid feudal archer attacks or enemy scouts. We've already learned the dark age and feudal transitions, so let's jump right into the feudal age. Make double bit axe, the stable, and then horse collar. Using two villagers to build the stable will not only make it come up faster, but it will also mean that you can fight back against the enemy scout that's being a pest and hitting your builders. As I said earlier, the eco management is fairly simple for this. Just add farms every 60 wood as usual, and add houses when needed. Have constant production of scouts until you have 3 or 4 and then go attack. You can even attack with your first two if you can handle it, since you can always run from bad situations. Two scouts will easily pick off lone walling villagers, so if your opponent is late with their walls, then you can find some immediate damage by going as soon as your first scout groups up with your starting scout. Normally, you can't afford too many scouts early due to lacking food. There are a few things you can do to increase the number of scouts you can build though. Looking back to the Dark Age, sending 5 to berries will give you extra food for a while. Also, adding 2 farms after your boars run out can be good. 
These farms won't have horse collar, but it's fine, as it's just sacrificing a bit of wood later for food income now, which, if your goal is to make scouts, is a good thing. The third way to get extra food income in the early game is a higher level trick called deer pushing. Using your starting scout, you can push deer to your town center so your villagers can take them. This is quite difficult, so I don't recommend it until the build order is extremely easy for you and you have the extra mental resources to allocate for this APM involved trick. If you can push deer while not idling your town center and also keeping your villagers working, then it might be worth it to push a few. Since you'll be sacrificing scouting time, you have to be very fast with the deer pushing so that you can still go to your opponent's base as you need to know where to send your scouts later. Don't push deer if you're under 1000 elo since there are probably major issues with your opening that are much higher priority. As with our defensive feudal build, when playing scouts, send villagers to gold around 8 villagers or 5 plus wheelbarrow before starting castle age research. You'll also need a blacksmith before you can go up since you need 2 feudal buildings. If you built an archery range for skirmishers, then you don't need the blacksmith to click up, but you'll want it for upgrades so you should get it anyways. Good times to shoot for are 33 plus wheel or 36 villagers to castle age when adding 2 or 3 scouts, and 36 plus wheel or 39 villagers when adding some skirmishers mid feudal age. If you added lots of scouts and skirmishers, then your uptime might be even over 40 villagers. With a stronger economy going to castle age, you'll be able to afford more units and upgrades, so adding a third stable for more knights and upgrading your skirmishers to elite might make sense. Since the build is so simple, let's take a more in-depth look at the do's and don'ts for using your scouts early. Try not to lose HP on your initial scout. Your first power spike of two scouts is very strong if you have two healthy scouts. If one of your scouts is weak, then you'll have a hard time doing as much damage to villagers. When attacking a group of villagers, pull your scouts back a bit when the villagers start attacking back. This will cause more idle time, and since your units are faster, you can just re-engage when the villagers go back to work. This will annoy your opponent a lot, causing them to make other mistakes as well. Occasionally a weak villager will be exposed, and you can commit to killing it before retreating. You just have to be patient with this technique. Against Spearmen, you can take fights when you have 4 scouts against 1 spear and killing the spear will lead to some villagers disruption. Try not to let the Spearmen hit you downhill though, as the hill advantage is massive for them against scouts. Running from Spearmen is usually preferred, as you can kill them later with skirmishers or knights. When engaging against the enemy army, only do so at a time that you'll be able to take a good fight or just before they can threaten villagers. In fights against archers and spearmen, it's vital to focus down the spearmen first and then go after the archers next. Spearmen do a ton of damage to scouts, so getting them out of the picture fast will let you keep more of your scouts alive after the battle, which will then allow you to go for a counterattack. This is another key point that you can use in other situations as well. Directly after winning a battle, your opponent should have less army than you, so by attacking their base right away, you may be able to take advantage of their weakness before they can assemble more troops to stop you. As long as you keep up with your military production, you should always have more mass here. It's important to keep in mind that the opponent might just go to Castle Age to make stronger units, so just spamming scouts without getting to Castle Age can be a mistake. If the opponent is fully walled and you have no way of really getting in and doing damage since you didn't add range units, just going to Castle Age while applying pressure is probably best. By attacking the opponent's walls, you force them to add more units, pull villagers to repair and re-wall, and also distract them. This is what I mean by applying pressure. You don't have to do a ton of damage, but by attacking the enemy walls, you're still accomplishing something. By pressuring the opponent during the Castle Age transition, you can more easily follow it up with our next strategy, the Siege Push. In terms of our economy in the Castle Age transition, it's exactly what we learned before. 9 to 10 on gold, 15 to 17 farms, and the rest on wood. If Feudal Age was fairly long and we have somewhere around 40 villagers, then adding a few more to gold and making sure that we have two mining camps can be good. Something like 12 to 14 on gold could be good here, since Siege also requires a lot of gold. Your rally point of your town center can be on wood, otherwise your gold mine will end up with way too many villagers on it pretty quickly. Later in Castle Age, you can take a second gold mine with either a mining camp or a town center if you need more gold. You'll want to make a Siege workshop just outside your opponent's walls as soon as possible upon reaching Castle Age. 
This involves sending a villager forward when you're about 50% up to Castle Age, though the exact timing depends on the distance to your opponent's base. If you have map control during the Castle Age transition, then you can safely send your villager during this time. If you want to take back map control with knights instead of feudal army, then you can send your villager with your first few knights, as these knights will be able to clear the path of enemies. You can also send a villager forward without having map control, but this can be risky since your opponent might find it and pick it off. The first goal of a siege push is to break your opponent's walls so you can get to those juicy villagers. Players that are pretty solid with their defense will be able to repair their wall against knights, and maybe get some monks out to convert over their walls. This is where mangonels come in. Mangonels can shoot over walls to one-shot villagers that try to reinforce it, which will allow your knights to take down buildings more quickly. Mangonels also one-shot monks before they have sanctity, so monks are pretty scared of mangonels if they aren't upgraded. You have to watch out for redemption and sanctity monks, however, since these will actually flip this interaction in favor of the monks. Luckily, these upgrades take some time and money, so hopefully you can break your opponent's walls before they can upgrade their monks. Since we're doing a siege push and not a raid, keeping your knights near your mangonels is very important, otherwise they will easily get picked off by enemy units. If you want to raid a bit, just split off like 4 of your knights maximum to raid. This is only okay if your army can beat the opponent's army, especially in the case that they're just making villagers on 3 town centers and don't have much army. If your opponent is also one town center, then keeping your knights near your mangonels to protect them is often better. I have a video on how to attack your opponent, which goes through four types of attacks, so check that out to learn some things about how to use your units in different situations. As always, constant unit production is of utmost importance when staying on one town center in Castle Age. Keep your stables producing knights, keep the siege workshop producing mangonels, and keep the town center producing villagers, and you'll usually have at least as many units as your opponent, which, if you're controlling a hill, your opponent can never really fight you. If you're doing some economic damage, then your opponent may never have enough army to fight you, as long as you keep your army producing. Since unit production is so important here, I highly recommend making a save just before you reach Castle Age, and replay making the siege workshop with constant knights and villagers while not getting housed. The eco-management for this is fairly simple for now while you're only on one town center. At this point, you can turn on auto reseed at the mill, as that's just one more thing that you won't have to think about. As you get higher level, turning off auto reseed is better, since you can't afford to have your mangonel production disrupted due to villagers reseeding farms. On Castle Age, get Bowsaw, have two knights in your queue, and make the siege workshop forward. If you send your villager forward with your first few knights, then you'll make it a bit later. Once the siege workshop is complete, make constant mangonels until you have around 5 or 6. By this point, you should already be destroying your opponent's town center and winning the game. That's the idea at least, but here are a few things to watch out for. If you and your opponent are going mass knights, it can be difficult to protect your siege as you'll both have the same number of units if you're both on two stables. Against 3 stables, 2 stables with siege will just lose, so you probably don't want to do a heavy siege investment against mass knights. In this situation, adding monks from home and skipping the siege push can be better, but we won't get too into that for now. Having a mix of pikemen and knights, or camels and knights, can be another good response to an enemy going mass knights. If your opponent gets a castle up to defend, try attacking from a different angle, or abandon the siege push in favor of getting to 3 town centers and focusing on villager production. We'll learn how to do this effectively in the next video. Against an opponent who is playing ranged units, or is super far behind to castle age, a siege push can be just what you need to finish the game. A common response to a knight siege push is mass pikemen. Against this, some well-placed mangonel shots will soften up the pikes enough for your knights to clean them up. This can be a bit difficult when it comes to unit control, so loading up my infinite micro map either in the scenario editor, so you can create some pikemen as the AI, or with a friend in multiplayer is a good way to practice this. You can download the map from the mods page and then open it in the editors tab, then test the scenario. Move the king to one of the pavilions in the top to take over a certain set of buildings in the battlefield. Then, turn on the Aegis cheat by typing it in chat, which will make everything train instantly. The other thing you need to know is how to control the AI. Hold Control, Shift, and the corresponding F key to the player number that you want to control. For example, Control, Shift, F2 takes over player 2. From here, you can make pikemen and move them. 
I like to run this with 25 pikemen against 15 knights with 2 mangonels. Just attack move the pikes in, and then quickly switch back to player 1 with control, shift, and f1. Then you can practice your attack rounds. Make sure to shoot and fall back with your mangonels, and then send your knights in when the pikemen get close to your mangonels. This is an effective way of taking this fight. When sending your knights to attack, make sure to use attack move or patrol. Getting used to using two control groups for your units will go a long way, so this drill is really invaluable. If you want to play this map with a friend, then make a lobby and select the map from the custom map selection, then enable cheats, give full tech tree, and set unlimited resources. You'll also want to set an AI in player 2 or player 3 so that you can take their buildings at the start. If the map isn't showing up in the custom scenario list, then make sure you have it downloaded in the mods page. Let's quickly review the key points that we learned in this video. The two strategies that we added to our repertoire are scouts in feudal age and a siege push to accompany our knights in castle age. The scouts, though weak in a straight up fight, can deal damage to your opponent while you're safe behind walls at home. With a skirmisher follow up, you should be safe in the mid feudal age against an opponent going archers and spearmen. In castle age, against a weakened opponent or one going ranged units, going for a siege push can be a potent strategy. Try to get a forward siege workshop and go for constant knights and siege to overwhelm your opponent. And that does it for this one. We should have some solid tools for defensive play in the early game, and are finally starting to learn some strong castle age plays. In the next video, we'll learn how to play archers into scouts for heavy aggression in feudal age, as well as how to 3TC boom on castle age. And as always, thanks for watching.